Oh my. Chris Lipe here. Michael Jackson, Smooth Criminal. Original studio multi-tracks. All 50-something tracks. This isn't stems. This is like every little thing. I mean, look at all these. We've got lots and lots of wonderful flavors and textures to go over here. I am so excited. Of all the Michael Jackson stuff I've done on the channel so far, I have not gotten anything this in-depth with everything broken out like this. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this one. I'm warning you this is going to be a longer video. Longer Michael Jackson video than some of the other ones. I'm going to spend time initially on some of the instrumentation. And then after we've gotten a chance to really get that in our systems, I will spend more time on the vocals. I did not realize... Well, I did realize that Michael Jackson was extra percussion-y with his voice on this song. But I did not realize the the complexity of it or the nuance of it until I got a chance to hear things soloed out. So I'm really excited to get into this stuff with you. For those of you just joining me, this is an education channel. I teach people how to sing. I've got a free voice course that you should definitely sign up for if you have any interest at all in improving your singing. What that means is that I get to do things like this under fair use. Michael Jackson's copyright owners let me use these tracks to show you how you can do different things with your voice. There are some stipulations, though. I have to start and stop. I can't just let things play for long increments. I can't play the whole mix. I have to play parts of the mix. There has to be a fair amount of time between playbacks. And I can't play things for too long either. It might be good for you to give the album version a full uninterrupted listen. And then you can enjoy what I'm doing maybe a little bit more, having the song fresh in your mind. Also, I was given these tracks by a close friend who's well-connected in the music industry. I'm not able to make them available. These aren't mine to give away. But enjoy what we're doing here. Enjoy what... Michael and his amazing team of musicians and, and producer was able to bring about. This is so special. Here we go. When I got these tracks, nothing was labeled, nothing was organized, nothing was mixed. So I've done a vocals up mix that you can, you know, pick out the nuances of the vocals a little bit more. But we're really going to be isolating things anyway, so it doesn't matter. I've also grouped different things down here so we can listen to the the groups of different instruments or we can really hone in on just one thing i did want to start out and just listen to some of the percussion all these little details in here we've got acoustic drums synth snares Interesting toms that you can hear, you know, synth toms that you can hear. Yeah, that kind of thing. Really, really neat. What I noticed is if we, if we go here. I mean, that's good old acoustic stuff, but I don't really hear that much on the, on the mixed version. You have all this other... Acoustic snaps, right? Ah, oh. and then these sticks. Like every other time. So cool. But it sounds far more acoustic when you solo things out. I love these sounds. Uh-huh. And then right here, these trashy sounds. What you hear more on the album is this kind of thing. That synth hat's pretty pom prominent.
It's also interesting how constant everything is in this in this recording. Now let's go and let's listen to some of the some of the basses. There's lots of layers. I had no idea there was so much going on with the with the bass. Check it out. We've got like this synth bass sound and this sort of like pseudo piano synth and then the more acoustic bass. We'll start with the acoustic bass, which is what I hear the least of. A little bit of drive on there. And then you add this stuff in. I mean, that sounds more familiar, right? But what I really didn't realize is, listen to this. I didn't realize that these sounds, there's not much low in there. Listen to how they build. More mid-range. Oh. And the subtle differences in performances and you know how everything's oh it's it's just incredible how how these blend together and make the sound. And I've I've got a little bit different balance even on my you know horrible mix than than uh, than they did in the original, but I didn't realize that all these parts were there. Let's listen to the drums and percussion together. much nuance so much nuance the other one that was really interesting for me to hear you know you hear the guitar in the in the mix but you don't hear it in a way that that stands out much uh, it's it's a very percussive thing and it blends in with the rest of the percussion <laughs> It's so much more percussion than it is melody or guitar or anything. I mean, there's a little bit of melody there, but wow. Like when you listen to that in the in the whole context, you more just kind of feel it than than anything else. It's interesting to look at these tracks too, because I don't know, you know, where they came from. Uh, you know how much they've been modified since they were recorded on the original tapes, but look at the the difference in in volume. But you can definitely hear more gain here. Listen to this. Versus this. It's performed a little bit different. He's digging in more here, but you can tell that they they juiced it. They put a you know clean boost in front of the amp or something. I love hearing the squeaks and in that that percussive pick attack. There's nothing more difficult than grooving on a consistent, funky, percussive sound and having to be really accurate. And this was recorded before they were really able to do quantizing and stuff. So being able, well, you could quantize MIDI all you want, but quantizing a guitar performance, I mean, that is some serious, serious chops right there. Another one of the things that's just so special is this string section and this is another I'm really thankful to have access to these because I can listen to the the low string arrangement the cellos and basses and stuff and then and then the high strings let's listen to the the high stuff first
magical. You can hear all the you know tuning nuances and stuff like that, and and uh, the headphone bleed a little bit. Oh, now let's listen to that same passage with just the low strings. I'll put them together. I love string arrangements. Hearing the real, real thing. No synth here. There might be some synth in there, in that one. Yeah, I think there is. Definitely synth. There's some real stuff in there too. But listen to the... Now you put them together though, and the realness of these high strings... Incredible. I don't know. I go back and forth on whether those are synthy or not. They, they fooled me with the full mix for sure. This section here. Oh. Yes, that's this part right here. If we if we get rid of everything here. Okay, Stopping. Uh, but you get to hear it like this. Oh man. So nuts. The other thing I think is so cool is is During the finale, that sounds like keyboard to me. Uh, they did a, such a great job of blending the the approach between the the real strings and the synth strings. Wow! And then finally, before we get to really diving into the vocals, check out some of these amazing synth layers. The way they're arranged, you know, that, like, there's a call and answer happening right here, right? Between that sort of radio sound, you got the roads coming in. Those robot sounds here. That's what I notice about these wonderful arrangements, and particularly this one. You've got so much going on. There's so many parts, but there's all these little conversations going on between all these all these different sounds. You've got the robot sounds. You've got the synth horns. You've got the little plucky sound. You've got the radio synth, and all of them are like, hey, over here. Oh, yeah, I hear you. Going on, and it's, it's so fun to listen to. I hope you're listening in headphones. Really like that road sound. Check this out here. This section's awfully special too, right here. Synth horns. And then, you know, these these fresh sounds, this kind of... I called them tube synths. Wow! Boop. 
So yeah, keep in mind this call and answer thing. Works great with vocals too, but as you're arranging your own music, okay, let's now get into listening to these isolated studio quality. I mean, there's no compression going on in terms of you know data compression anyway with these vocals. You can see here I've got I've got four tracks and we've got two lead vocals and the waveforms look different to me. I don't think it's a left right like I've seen from the other sections. It might be that he's singing into two different mics and and for the original um or for the eventual recording, the mix, they ended up using a little bit of both. So I'm going to, and they don't conflict. There's no phasing issues. You know, when we, when we solo out these, these vocals here, as it came into the window, was the sound of a crescendo. Ah. And I'll play more in a minute, but you don't hear like, oh, they, they didn't use both of those mics or whatever. So I'm not sure what that's about. If anybody knows, please let me know. Um, and then we've got these which is the, it's a background vocal sum. Left and right. Okay, so with that in mind, let's do some listening here from the beginning. Again, there's so much wonderful percussion that happens. Ow! That's covered up uh, by the little synthy stuff at the beginning. It's cool to hear that by itself. Listen. Into his body. He's a walking percussionist. As he's ah. Uh, as I came into the window, was the sound of a crescendo. Uh, he came into her apartment. He left the blood stains on the carpet. Uh, she went underneath the table. He could see she was a neighbor. So she. <laughs> Notice how. He's really he is spitting the words out and he's so intense but he's not tense you can tell in his from what we hear of his body language when you, when you see him dance this is intensity as its best this is not tension we need to as singers get this separated you can't be intense and engaged if you are tense I talk a lot about that in other videos. But when you hear him just really going at it and being really rhythmic, and th- you know, I, mean, I'm, I realize I'm being kind of a cartoon here as I'm doing a horrible imitation of what he's doing. But this is the kind of freedom that we need to have if we want to have the passion that Michael displays. I'm not going to be able to sing like him or do what he does. But taking a little bit of his mindset and attitude is going to go a long way. So she ran into the bedroom. She was struck down. It was her doom. Annie, are you okay? So Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Annie, are you okay? So Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Annie, are you okay? So Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Annie, are you okay? So Annie, are you okay? Are you walking, Annie? Ah. So I love that you can hear the proximity effect of him moving around, and sometimes he sounds like he's off the mic a little bit more. Sometimes he's he's in it a bit more. I like that you can hear that. You can't hear that anywhere else when you've got all the compressors and plug in or well, <laughs> compressors and, and other hardware going on. But you can hear him moving around even in the midst of the mic. And I, I soloed out the uh, just the lead vocals there. Let's let's listen to just the background vocals. And it you okay. So Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Annie, are you okay? So Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Annie? Yeah, he gets closer to the mic. Are you okay? Are you okay? Notice how he gets more raspy. Ah, oh, it's 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 really interesting how he he can be calm, calmer, and more full voice, and then raspier. Take cues. It doesn't matter if you can't sing as well as him. Put these things in your own voice and see what happens. Are you okay, Annie? Annie, uh, are you okay? So, Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Annie, are you okay? It's this stage whisper. Are you Are you hearing me? I think you are. But he's every bit as loud as though he's full voice. Uh, uh, yes. Background vocals. Annie, are you okay? Will you tell us that you're okay? Nah, there's a sign at the window that he stuck you. I can shindo, Annie. He came into your apartment. Now the blood stays on the carpet. Love those. 
signature Michael Jackson, wonderful percussion, but you ain't heard nothing yet. Let's listen to the, the leads there over that section. And again, I have to stop at regular increments in order for this video to even be up. So just uh, thank you for patience and understanding. Annie, are you okay? Will you tell us that you're okay? That the sign of the window that he struck you, I can send your Annie. He came into your apartment, that the blood stays on the carpet, and then you ran into the bed. Little punch there. On the carpet, and then you ran into the bedroom. Probably not a punch, probably a comp, uh, because he's he's so in the moment that would be really hard to punch there. But you can hear maybe going between different takes. Wow, it, what's kind of fun is to hear him singing up there. Annie, are you okay? Will you tell us that you're okay? That the sign of the wonderful soulful grit, right? And then you hear these. He's clean. He's clean. He, yeah, he's singing up there in his in his head voice, and he and he's singing as high in his chest voice here, with the grit and the blend is just impeccable. Annie, are you okay? Will you tell us that you're okay? That the sign of the window that he struck you. I got him, do He came into your apartment. That the blood stays on the carpet. And then you ran into the. Notice how the the tom. Those like synth toms come in on the duh, on his percussion, what he does with his mic with his mouth. On the carpet, duh, and then you ran into the bedroom. You were shut down. It was shut down. Annie, are you okay? So Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Annie, are you? Brilliant, brilliant arranging. Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? You've been hit by, you've been hit by a smooth criminal. Ah. Oh. <laughs> That! I knew it was there. I'd heard it, sort of, but to hear it like this. Listen again. I wasn't sure what was, you know, other synths and other percussive things, because if you listen in the, with the full mix, right, to this part, I can barely talk. Sorry. <laughs> Listen to the full mix. There's so many other things going on that you you don't really give it credit for the fact that this is all his voice, just perfectly in time and groovy. So the camera to the outway. It was Sunday. What a black. Such genius percussion. And, you know, there's a lot of people who, who do good beatboxing and, and do stuff like this that's, you know, just out of this world. I think what impresses me so much about Michael in, in particular is that he just, he can do anything with his voice. I mean, he's got the high cleans. He's got the high gritty, soulful gospel sound. He's got the... The percussive dance. I mean, it's just such a wonderful hybrid of things that really nobody's ever been able to do. I got to listen to that one more time. Yes. So they came into the outway. It was Sunday. What a black day. About the marriage hesitation. And what's interesting, too, is how he's able to transition into more melody oriented things. Again, he's doing this all. This is one take. Right here. Uh, this, this isn't layers. He's doing so many different things with his voice. The percussion, the melody, the rasp, the, the words. I mean, all these things in one voice. It sounds like it should be layers, but it's not. Annie, are you okay? Now it's layers. Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Annie, are you okay? Annie, are you okay? I just love those those uh, call and answers right there. Are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Annie, are you okay? Yes. Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Annie, are you okay? So Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Ah, now this is another thing I never really noticed. I thought maybe ah, uh, you know, added reverb or whatever. But listen to his proximity on his mic. It's like he turns away. Annie, are you okay? So Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Annie, are you okay? Will you tell us? So he leans back into the mic here. Annie, are you okay? But he, it's like he he turned around almost, right? You know, la da 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 that's how much he was he was into the performance where he's just kind of I can just see him and you you know I've seen him footage of him 
uh, recording, he is so, so lost in the art of what he's doing. Annie and you're walking. Are you walking, Annie? Sounds like he's practically across the room. Annie and you're walking. Are you walking, Annie? Annie and you're walking. Will you tell us that you're walking? I tell the sign of the window that he struck you. I can send your Annie. He came into your apartment. Let the blood stays on the carpet. Ah, listen to this, this proximity. I love hearing stuff like this. Ready? Let the blood stays on the carpet. The blood stains right here. The blood stains on the. It's like he's so close to the mic. You've got some of that going on in in this recording, and of course they just kind of left it where that that capsule's being popped just a little bit. Big deal. And the blood stains on the carpet. And then you ran into the bedroom. You were shut down. It was shut too. Annie, are you okay? So, Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? You've been hit by, you've been struck by a smooth criminal. Oh, oh. Achaka, achaka. No! Achaka, achaka. The, the precision. He's dancing with his voice. Achaka, achaka. No! And you know what makes this, you know, when I record stuff, and I know a lot of people these days when they record, there's this sense that, you're you're sort of piecing your stuff together. But we know that for the most part, he was very he was a very linear recording artist. In other words, he'd start from the beginning and he'd record to the end. And they might do multiple takes and comp things together, but he was about being in the performance as a whole, as opposed to what more of us do today. It was like, oh, it'd be cool to like dub this in or put this in or let's punch this these three words or or this little oh they put a little percussion you know, beatboxing thing right here because you didn't do it when you were singing earlier no this is his inspiration and it's happening linearly which makes it even more inspired and, and fun to realize Ooh. wow The intensity of those stomps. Bow! <laughs> Bow! Bow! All the claps and stuff. Bow! Even the breaths you don't ever hear, right? Listen to how even this section, if I bring this up. Check this out. You would never hear this in, on the album. Those little, <laughs> those little inhales and exhales, those, they're not something you hear, but they're something that you sense within the performance, even though they, they get totally buried by the rest of the arrangement. Even with them up, listen. <laughs> you don't hear them, but you do feel them. Ah. <laughs> uh. And all the different yelps are so different. It's not like he's just got one flavor of, of yelp. I mean, listen to this one <gasps> versus this one <gasps> and this one. <gasps> that one those are similar, but <gasps> he's got that, that more, you know, forward sound. And then <gasps> that's more of a sigh, right? <gasps> and then he's got the gritty, you know, sort of fry based thing up. The, ah, so many fun textures. <laughs> Longer? I don't know. This part is just golden. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Notice the sigh at the very beginning of each one. I don't know. And you got the little inhales at the beginning. I don't know. You can tell it's an inhale because, listen. Ah. Right here. This thing. He's inhaling, exhaling, inhaling. Isn't that cool? Listening in context again. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. And then perfectly hitting that pitch up there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know me. That garment. And then switches characters, switches voices in a way that you don't hear him do it this blatantly. 
in a lot of in a lot of the recordings. Listen here. He's this desperate high angelic sound. And then that garment right into it. That garment, Danny. That garment, baby. That garment, Danny. That that gritty, soulful gospel sound, man. Oh, now listen to these. This is incredible here. You can tell that that's like some sort of rehearsed thing because he's done it. It's not the same every time. I mean, you can even see here. I mean, it's it's a different performance, of course, but he, he's he got that rhythmic thing between the what he's doing with his tongue and his breath. And I mean, it's it's incredible. Ugh. You know what I think of sort of here, this sort of scatty thing is I, I think of Jonathan Davis on, on uh, with Freak on a Leash. It's that same sort of thing where you've got this command over your inhales and your exhales and your, your mouth percussion and, and how it ties into your singing and other phonation. It's really, really special and very difficult to do. Check out my video on Freak on a Leash where I really break down how he does that kind of stuff. It's pretty neat. Ooh. I also love it. You can tell he's a he's a true bodily instrument here because listen how how um constant his foot tapping is. Unapol- he did stop stomping there, but he w- can't, got right back into it. I love it. Bigger stomps. Wow. Thank you so much for joining me for Smooth Criminal. Isolated, multi-track, breakdown galore. I have so much fun. This might be the most fun I've had doing MJ's stuff uh, so far. Hopefully more will be coming. Thank you for your interaction and all your comments on these. Again, if you have any interest in singing, click that link below and join my free voice course. I'll help you discover what your voice is can really do in light of some of the inspirations you hear on guys like Michael Jackson, Chris Cornell, Lane Staley, Freddie Mercury, some of my favorite vocalists. We'll see you for more.